Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, in this session and in the next session as well, we will observe some solved problems pertaining to the lexical analyzer. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of this session, today we will observe three solved questions on lexical analyzer. Consider the first question. The lexical analysis for a modern computer language such as Java needs the power of which one of the following machine models in a necessary and sufficient sense. Basically, we are being asked which one of these machines is both necessary and sufficient for the lexical analysis phase. We have been given the options A. Finite State Automata B. Deterministic Pushdown Automata or DPDA C. Non-Deterministic Pushdown Automata or NPDA and finally, D, Turing machine. Well, in the previous sessions, we have learned that using deterministic finite automata, the lexical analyzer recognizes tokens. DFA is nothing but a finite state automata. So, A is undoubtedly the correct choice. Let's explore the other options too. Now, deterministic pushdown automata or DPDA and non-deterministic pushdown automata or NPDA are the acceptors of DCFL that is deterministic context-free language and CFL that is context-free language respectively. CFLs are generated from context-free grammars. Now during the session different phases of compiler we observed in syntax analysis phase the syntax analyzer makes use of the CFGs in the construction of the parse trees. So, using these two, syntax analysis phase can be implemented. By the way, NPDAs have more expressive power than DPDAs. Coming to the last option, since compilers are implemented on physical systems, we can design a Turing machine that can map the high level language strings into assembly language target code. So, Turing machine has the power to implement the entire compiler itself. So, for lexical analysis, finite state automata only is both necessary and also sufficient. Unlike pushdown automators or the Turing machines, which are more than sufficient. Coming to the next question, the output of the lexical analyzer is, so we are to find out the output of the lexer from these four options. Consider the first option, parse tree. Well, it cannot be the correct one since parse tree is the output of the parser or syntax analyzer. The same can be stated for intermediate code as well. If you remember, in the session different phases of compiler, we observe that it is the outcome of the intermediate code generation phase. Now option C, machine code, also cannot be the choice. Think about it. The compiler produces only assembly language code. Machine code is actually the output of the language translator. Finally, option D, a stream of tokens, is the only option left. Well, it is the correct answer. In the previous sessions, we have observed that the lexer takes the lexems as inputs and produces stream of tokens and passes that to the parser. So, for this question, option D is the only correct choice. Let's move on to the final question of this session. Consider this question. The number of tokens in the following C statement is, and these are the four options given. So, like the last session, we will first count the number of tokens in this C statement and then we will select the correct option. However, before we start counting, let's understand this C statement first. Now, it is basically a printf statement which has three arguments. This string literal, the variable i, and the address of i. If we notice the string literal argument on the screen, it will print the value stored by the variable i. And the variable i is having the integer value. Because if we observe the format specifier, it is percent %d, where d specifies decimal value. Now the printf function will also print the address of the variable i. Observe the format specifier here. 
it is percent %x, where x specifies hexadecimal value. Addresses are usually represented by hexadecimal values. Alright, let's now start counting the tokens of this statement. We are initially keeping the count as 0. Now coming to the statement, printf is the first token and since it is the name of the function, so it is an identifier keyword. So count is now 1. Next, we have the left parenthesis, which is a punctuated token. So count becomes 2 now. Then we have the entire string literal. So that's another token. Count will be increased to 3. Next, we encounter the argument separator, comma, another punctuated token. Let's increase the count. It is 4 now. Then the identifier i increases our token count to 5. We again encounter the punctuated token comma, which has been used here as another argument separator. With this, our count is increased by 1, making it 6. Now the next token is this ampersand. This is a special character token. So with this one, our token count becomes 7. Next, we again have the identifier token i. So count will now be 8. Thereafter, this right parenthesis, which signifies the end of the argument list of the printf function, it is a punctuated token. So now, the token count becomes 9. Finally, the statement terminator, the semicolon, which is another punctuated token, it will increase the token count to 10. So, from all these options, C is the correct choice. Now, before we conclude this session, let me try and explain the rest of the options. Option A states 3, right? If you observe the number of arguments of this function, we have 3 arguments. So, I believe that is the reason behind this specific value 3. Now, in option B, 26 is given. Considering the statement, if we start counting all the characters except this blank white space, observe, it will amount to 26. I guess this is why for option B, the value 26 was specified. Coming to option D, the value is 21. Now, if we consider the identifier printf as a single token, thereafter, without considering the space white space, if all the other characters are taken under consideration, the total number will amount to 21. Observe this. So, this may have been the reason for specifying the value 21 for option D. Anyway, the reason why I explained all this is, guesswork won't really work out here. If we don't know the concepts clearly, we won't be able to find the solution. So, for this particular question, the correct choice is option C, that is 10. So, in this session, we have observed three solved questions on lexical analysis. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe a couple of more solved problems. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.